Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game that allows for a freeform style of play. While occasionally Tom Nook and his co-art will set objectives, be it to harvest specific resources for construction, pay off bank loans or other tasks, on a day-to-day -day basis players are kinda left to their own devices. While many video games adhere to the principle of the ludus, the idea of a structured and controlled play where players obey the limits of the world, a game can also provide a form of what's known as Padia, a freeform improvisation where players are free to create their own rules, our own objectives and move towards them accordingly. Most games balance between these two concepts, but the likes of Animal Crossing and The Sims largely embrace the more freeform elements as critical to the experience. I'm Tommy Thompson and in this episode of Smoke and Mirrors, let's talk about how real world time delays in Animal Crossing help maintain and refresh the player's engagement. Animal Crossing in many circumstances will enforce a delay for specific actions to only become complete on the next calendar day, or rather specifically at 5am the subsequent day. This is in keeping with the game's in-world clock, where resources replenish and daily tasks are reset at the same time, with the exception of those pesky turnip prices which are reset twice a day at midnight and noon. Hence, when you complete major tasks such as finding the materials for constructing a new building, upgrading your house or ordering items via mail order, they'll take real world time to complete. Not to mention all the seasonal events and the flora and fauna that appear throughout the calendar year. Now, while this is my first game in the series, this isn't a new mechanic and for some in the Animal Crossing community it's such a pain that they abuse the time travelling trick whereby you reset the internal clock of the Switch to cheat the game to move ahead in order to skip all the wait times. But while for many this is a hindrance, I actually really like it, as it not only helps reinforce the pager, the freeform element of play, but it also becomes a mechanism through which Nintendo reinforces the player's need to take a break and replenishes their overall enjoyment of the game. As objectives are completed, the game effectively tells you that you're free to continue to play as you want. This is the moment that separates the more ludist focused gamers from the pager loving islanders. If you're someone for whom your focus is always on completing whatever tasks Tom Nook, Blathers or Isabel set for you, then that's the time to log out, perhaps switch games or turn off the console entirely, only to return back tomorrow. But for those who embrace the more open aspects of Animal Crossing's design, this is your chance to shine. Do you want to focus on decorating your house? Hunting down more fish or insects for your collection? Doing a bit of landscaping? Or visiting your friends' islands instead? Sure, the larger objectives of the game are more or less paused for now, but your own objectives take centre stage, and that gives players a lot of freedom to enjoy the game the way they want to. Now second of all, there's the fact that the game is more or less adding blockers to progress that tell me I can't achieve anything else today, and lest I have any of my own objectives to complete, I should just take the rest of the day off. This is an interesting concept, the idea of encouraging the player to not play the game and pace out their progress. I recognise this is partially to ensure you don't burn through the whole game and accidentally create Mega City 1 after binging the game for 20 hours straight, but it's an interesting approach where forcing gaps in a player's game time is intended as a benefit rather than a hindrance. This is particularly of relevance when you consider the more common application of time delays, often seen in mobile gaming, to make money. In these cases, you can only play provided you have sufficient materials, which either recharge over time or can be purchased through in-game microtransactions. In these instances, the game is forcing you to wait it out when you really want to play the game, lest you put down some cash. The process of forcing a player to wait until they can play again is intended to trigger a psychological response known as hedonic adaptation or treadmilling, where the player's appreciation and excitement is reset during the resting times. This leads to the player becoming more excited to return to the game, often as soon as possible. Now in mobile gaming, this is often used to punish the player with the ability to speed things up by paying real world money for the materials that need replenished. Whereas here in Animal Crossing, it's not only moderating playtime, but also allowing you to replenish your excitement for the game. This can help you plan ahead for future play sessions, but also prevents players from burning so hard all the way through the game that they finish it within two days, which is rather antithetical to the game's themes and intentions. Even though I was well aware of what was happening, I enjoyed the game more as I knew certain milestones were about to be reached and allowed for me to plan ahead as to what I would achieve every time I logged in allowing me to re-establish my own objectives within the game as I went, reinforcing the Pedia element of the game once more. I realise that this can still be read as rather insidious, and this enforced delay, and the psychological impact it has, is why players abuse the time travel trick in Animal Crossing. 
But if you can respect it for what it is, I think it helps maintain your investment in your slowly expanding village and allow you to just enjoy yourself in your own wee tropical locale. After all, everyone deserves a wee bit of a break every now and then, don't they? Thanks for watching this episode of Smoke and Mirrors. Let me know your thoughts on Animal Crossing New Horizons, and don't forget you can watch Smoke and Mirrors early on Patreon and support AI and games in the process. Have fun, folks. I'll be back. Once I find a good place to sell all these turnips. <laughs> <laughs>